Hello everyone and welcome in to 2024 WIAA Boys Tournament Basketball here on Zaleski Sports. It's win or go home from Columbus Catholic High School in Marshfield, Wisconsin. My name is Cale Jacoby alongside Isaac Eagle and Elena Eagle doing the production here tonight. The Columbus Dons, the number one seed Columbus Dons hosting the number nine seeded Loyal Greyhounds here in this regional semifinal matchup from Columbus Catholic High School. These two teams matched up twice during the regular season. Columbus won both outings. Columbus won the first matchup between these two teams way earlier on in the season. They won that 81 to 42 here at Columbus High School, but then Loyal at home against Columbus. It was 59 to 44, Columbus won that one. That game was close throughout the entire game. We were there for that one, as we have been for the Dons all season long, but 59-44 that last game. The Dons beat the Greyhounds. That one was back and forth throughout the entire game, really right up until the last few minutes where the Dons were able to go on a run, hit some free throws, and, and win it by 15 points. And again, the Loyal Greyhounds, they are 12 and 13 coming into this game. They were eight and six in conference play, but in that 12 and 13 record, nine of those wins have come in their last 13 games. So they started out this season at four and nine, or excuse me, three and nine overall. These Greyhounds were, and to finish 12 and 13, winning nine of their last 13 games. We talked with Coach Konechny, I think it was after, it was after last game and it was after the last time Columbus beat Loyal, where he talked about it, how, how much that Loyal team has improved this season, and they really have. Again, it, the record, the record tell, uh, tells you all the story you need, you need to know in terms of their improvement here this season for the Greyhounds. Three and nine to start the season, winning nine of their last 13 games. And that's exactly how you want to go into the postseason. They're coming off a win at Pittsville in the first round of regionals, regional quarterfinals. Last, or excuse me, this week, Tuesday, they beat Pittsville at Pittsville. That was a road game. They won that one by 30 points at Pittsville against the Pittsville team that was seeded ahead of them as the number eight seed. So again, this loyal team, a nine seed, but probably better than that nine seed they got just because of how, how much they've improved as the season has gone along. They finished the season stronger than they started it. So it should be a good one here tonight, but Columbus, they're coming off a blowout win as well. They beat Cooley Christian 88-22 to on Tuesday in the 1-16 matchup. We are here for that from Columbus. No, keep me. So. Jay D. Auditorium here at Columbus Catholic High School. Tonight. In a regional semifinal of the Wisconsin State High School Boys Basketball Tournament, the Greyhounds of High School will take on your Columbus to honor America and those defending your freedom for the playing of our national anthem by the best band in the land, dear Columbus High School pep band, under the direction of Mr. Tom Zimmerman.
that was your national anthem live here from Columbus Catholic High School on Zaleski Sports. Just a moment, we're going to send it down to the PA announcer to announce your starting lineups here tonight. Apologies, we had some technical difficulties there, but we're back up and running and ready to go here for the Columbus Loyal Regional Semifinal matchup. They say it's incredibly difficult to beat a team three times, and uh, it, it is, and the Don's going to have to do it here tonight. This will have to be the third time of the season beating Loyal, and we're going to send it down to the PA announcer for your starting lineup, starting with the Loyal Grand. Edgar, number 11, Sacramore, number zero, Reed Stigler. Edgar, six foot, Sacramore, number five, Bryce Steven. Edgar, number 11, senior, number 11, Isaac Jacoby. At center, six three, Sacramore, number 12, Tonight for the Columbus Dons and the Loyal Greyhounds. To recap for Columbus, starting all senior starting lineup, Emmett Konechny, Lucas Kreklow, Charlie Moore, Blake Jacoby, and Cy Becker for Loyal. Starting is Reed Stiglitz, Bryce Deegan, Isaac Jacoby, Kane Tofar, and Jacob Schill here tonight for the Loyal Greyhounds. The Dons have made it known in, in some of our interviews that uh, what their goal is here this season state tournament they and there's not a lot of teams out there with a they, they can say they have a realistic chance I mean everybody's got a chance everybody's got a chance you can go on you can go on a run but the Dons are one of those teams in the state that have got as good a chance as anybody and they're going to tip off the regional semi here against the loyal Greyhounds Dons beat them twice in the regular season but a Cloverbelt East conference matchup and the Dons going to have to beat them for a third time here tonight Jacoby in the corner as the Dons win the tip little up and under from Jacoby it's good Blake Jacoby to the basket. Again, the last time these two teams matched up, Loyal played some very good man-to-man -man defense, holding the Dons to just 59 points. And the Dons really ran them off the three-point line, but the Dons did a nice job attacking the basket after that. Here the Greyhounds right wing. It's Jacoby, Isaac Jacoby. Hands off for Jacob Schill. Schill up top for Deegan. Deegan swings it left wing to Tofar. Now hands off for Stiglitz. Stiglitz, the pick and roll to Tofar. Jump shot is good from Kane Tofar. And again, if you're an outsider coming into this game, you're just looking at the game schedule and see the Columbus beat him by double digits twice, you might think this will be a blowout. But if you actually watch that last game, you know that these Greyhounds played the Dons tight last time, and we should be in for a good one here tonight. Emmett Konechny up top. 
Swings it over to Jacoby. Jacoby attacks the rim. Little floater, no good. Jacoby falls to the floor. And it's the Greyhounds the other way to, with a chance to take a lead here early on. Up top, Stiglitz. Swings it over to Deegan. Now into the short corner for Jacoby. Jacoby backs in and goes up with a jump hook. No good. Becker the rebound. Emma Konechny pushes the other way. Charlie Moore in the corner. Now up top, Konechny tries the tough three. It's blocked. And not quite saved. It'll stay with the Dons. But a block shot on a Konechny three for Kane Tofar. And again, that's what we saw the last time these two teams matched up. The Greyhounds not giving the Dons any space on that three-point line. Again, it's what the Dons do incredibly well. Moore, and here's Jacoby. That's a wide open look. No good. And a battle for the board here. That's going to be saved off Kreklau. Possession stays with Loyal. That time Reed Stiglitz threw it right off of Kreklau. Had he play there by Stiglitz. As Blake Jacoby no good on that three. And as soon as I said that, that Loyal doesn't give, a, doesn't give the Dons any space from the three-point line, Blake Jacoby gets a wide open one. Just a bit strong on that one. Jacob Schill swings it into the corner. Stiglitz now into the post. Schill, the left-handed three, no good from the lefty. Schill had a couple of big threes in that, la in the, that last game that these two teams played. Kreklau in the short corner to Becker. Back door to Kreklau. Jacoby in the corner. Spins baseline. Left-hand shot. No good, but a foul. They're going to get Stiglitz with the foul that time, and Blake Jacoby will head to your serve pro, Jamie Wenzel, free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel at serve pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration serve pro like it never even happened. And didn't mention earlier. Get to that after this free throw. Blake Jacoby nails it. Jacoby has been ultra aggressive to start this game. But didn't mention it earlier. Loyal Greyhounds coached by Brandon DeSmet. And, of course, the Dons coached by Joe Konechny. Blake Jacoby goes two for two from your surf pro, Jamie Wenzel, free throw line. And it's the Dons up by two. Greyhounds the other way. Swings it over here to Schill. Schill now over to Stiglitz. Stiglitz into the corner for Bryce Deegan. Deegan attacks. The runner, no good. May have been blocked by Konechny. Konechny the rebound, pushing ahead. Going to attack outside to Jacoby. He did not attempt that open look there. Instead gets it out to Becker. You don't see that often. I don't, you don't see the Dons pass up good, good looks from three very often. But Jacoby attacking the basket with ferocity. Blake Jacoby has got six quick points. He has been absolutely ultra aggressive here to start this game. Especially attacking the basket. Outside here at Stiglitz. Up top, Deegan. Back outside for Schill. Schill poked away. Now up top to Stiglitz. Again, if you're loyal, you want this game to be low scoring, grind it out type matchup here, as that's a jump hook from Kane Tofar. No good. Because you know the Dons, they can put up, if they had their starters out there the whole game, they could put up 100 with the way they can shoot threes. Emma Kanishi to the basket. Tough finish up and good. The Dons relentlessly attacking the basket early. Emmett Kanishi for two. Reed Stiglitz will bring it up. Swings it over to Deegan. Deegan now up to Schill. Schill right wing here for Stiglitz. Back into the corner. Now for Tofar. We got a whistle. Timeout. Coach DeSmet for Loyal. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more regional semifinal boys basketball action after this on Zaleski Sports. Good day. My name is Ken Hyman, and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin, as a matter of fact. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Quesa Blanca, Quesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteri, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edam, Gouda, and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield, Central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. The tools you trust from the people you can depend on. Shop the store within a store and find what you're looking for. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Now that's what I was looking for. Looks like you found what you're looking for. We redesigned our store to offer the biggest selection of Milwaukee tools. A selection so big you'll need a map to find your way out. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield, Central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. 
Couple of substitutions out on the floor here. Matt Konechny checks in and the Greyhounds nearly get an over them and back. It will be. They will call that over and back. First turnover of the game either side. But it's Hunter Walter in for the Loyal Greyhounds and Matt Konechny in for the Columbus Dons. Cy Becker takes a seat for the Dons and that's Schill on the bench for the Greyhounds. Konechny in the corner. Blake Jacoby tries it from three. No good. And Blake has been just ultra aggressive. I've said it multiple times now, but he has just come out with that kind of killer instinct and attitude here tonight. And you're saying, I'm going to... To try to take this over early. He's really done a good job on the inside. 0 for 2 from 3 so far. Comes up with a steal there. Back the other way, it's Jacoby. Quickly to Charlie Moore in the corner. Thought about the 3. Instead, going to attack the basket. Left hand finish up and good. Charlie Moore for 2. 10 to 2, your score. The Don's starting to apply a little bit of full court pressure here. Here's Deegan. Or excuse me, Stiglitz. Hands off to Deegan. Deegan defended by Jacoby. Deegan backing his way in. Skips it outside to Schill. Now into the corner here. Tough to see over that standing student section for the Dons. It's a packed student section here tonight. That one no good from Kane Tofar. This is a packed gym just in general here tonight. Both sides. The Columbus side total looks like filled the capacity. Loyal side the same thing. Blake Jacoby no good from outside. Deegan. Defended by Matt Konechny. Charlie Moore the steal. He's got a breakaway opportunity. Charlie Moore to the basket for two. The Dons have scored all 12, or excuse me, 10 of their 12 points from in the paint. The other two have come at the free throw line. Attacking the basket here. Stiglitz no good. The Dons the other way. Here's Emma Konechny up to Charlie Moore. He tries the three. That one rattles home for Charlie Moore, and he's fired up. Charlie Moore has scored seven straight for the Dons, and they have jumped out to a quick 15-2 lead here on the Greyhounds. And so far, really, the Dons, they've, they've had it going well enough offensively, but, but the, the story tonight so far for Columbus has been their defense on these Greyhounds. These Greyhounds have not had many open looks here tonight, if any, and that shot no good from Stiglitz. He's fouled to go to the line for two. They call that on Blake Jacoby, his first personal team first. But again, you can tell the Dons came out ready to play here tonight. Again, sometimes when you when you come off those first round playoff games against you know teams that sometimes you get scores like 88 to 6 to 22, as here's Stiglitz to the line, knocks down the first. But sometimes coming off those games, you can you can kind of come out flat um, in some of these games to to start off, and the Dons definitely have not. I mean, offensively, it was Jacoby coming out aggressive, and then Charlie Moore has scored seven straight, but defensively, they have really been locked in early here tonight. Stiglitz goes two for two. 15 to four, your score. Charlie Moore left wing. He thought about the heat check there. Now up top to Emmett Konechny. That Moore three was the first three of the game for Columbus. A little over five minutes in. Blake Jacoby tries the three. That's no good. He's 0 for four from out there here tonight. Loyal the other way. Again, Jacoby's done his damage on the inside and at the free throw line. Emma Konechny nearly comes up with a steal there. Stiglitz swings it over. Now the pass inside. Konechny pokes it away out of bounds. It'll stay with the Greyhounds. 15 for Columbus. Reed Stiglitz to inbound. Stiglitz looking. Can he find somebody? Gets it to his teammate in the corner. The three up and good for Joseph Treffinger. Treffinger for three. And just like that, five in a row for the Greyhounds. That one poked away by Deegan into the corner. Matt Konechny for three. It's short. Greyhounds the other way. Deegan brings it up. Matt Konechny falls to the floor. Deegan got him with that in and out move. Into the post. Nice up and under move. Two points for Hunter Walter. And now a quick 7-0 run by the Greyhounds. Keeps this thing from getting too out of hand. Just a six-point game now. And that is a huge 7-0 run. Being down 15-2, you can't really afford to get down by many more than that. Charlie Moore tries the three. No good. Deegan brings it up. Defended by Matt Konechny. 
Now over to Stiglitz, double teamed, skips it outside. Treffinger thought about another three, but gets it back to Stiglitz. Stiglitz poked away by Jacoby, and he finds Deegan. Now back inside to Walter, outside for Treffinger. Treffinger defended by Moore, back to Walter in the corner. Back to Treffinger, Loyal going to reset their offense here. Deegan, defended by Jacoby, skips it over to Stiglitz. Stiglitz back up to Deegan. These Greyhounds taking their time. The Dons fans making noise on the defensive side. Backdoor pass to Treffinger. Off of Treffinger. Out of bounds. As I think Charlie Moore deflected that off of Treffinger's hands. And the possession goes to the Columbus Dons. Four turnovers for Loyal. Zero for Columbus. Cy Becker checks in for Charlie Moore. And it'll be interesting to see how deep Columbus goes into their bench. They usually go pretty deep as Sam Dooms checks in as well for the Dons. We've gone seven deep so far. Dooms in the short corner, up top here to Becker. Becker attacking the basket. Pump fake and he's called for the travel. First turnover of the game for the Dons. Checking into the game here for the Greyhounds is Landon Johnston. Pass in here to Stiglitz. That full court pressure from the Dons, Matt Konichny trying to make life difficult on Stiglitz here. Stiglitz outside for Treffinger. Treffinger back to Stiglitz. The ball screen and a whistle and a foul. And that's going to go on Matt Konichny. First personal team second. And I mentioned earlier, this gym is, it looks like it's about at capacity right now and just great to see. Only a few years removed from Gyms being empty, and just nice to see a few years later now all these gyms totally packed to the brim here for these regional playoffs. Inside, Walter, the tough finish. Hunter Walter for two, and it is now a 9-0 run for the Loyal Greyhounds. It's a 15-11 ball game. Emmett Konechny in the corner for Mack. Mack back to Emmett. Emmett. Looking for an opening here, gets it to his brother Mack. And that's going to be a foul. They're going to get Landon Johnston on the reach. Second team foul on the Greyhounds. First personal on Landon Johnston. I mean, again, what a run this has been, though, for Loyal. They were down 15-2. Looked like the Dons were getting ready to do what they've done to a lot of teams here this year and ended early, but the Greyhounds with a big-time 9-0 run to make it a four-point game. Matt Konechny in the corner. Into the post now, Cy Becker up top for Blake Jacoby. Emmett Konechny tries the three, that's good. Emmett Konechny rattles it home from three, he's got five. Stiglitz brings it up, Jacoby defending him, 18 to 11. Dons lead it. Stiglitz skips it to the corner. He's wide open over there, but let's be in the scouting report, leave him open. Stiglitz to the basket, he's fouled. Reed Stiglitz will head to the free throw line for two shots. As that one's going to be called on Sam Dooms, his first personal, team third. Stiglitz to the line for two shots. And he's two for two from there so far. Knocks down the first. SC Swiderski and SES Apartment or Home is where you want to live, work, and play all throughout central Wisconsin, the Chippewa Valley, and the Fox Valley. No matter where you live, look to SC Swiderski to make you feel right at home. Visit scswiderski.com for more. Stiglitz goes two for two from the line there. He's got four points. All have come from the free throw line. Charlie Moore back into the game. Looks like he checked in for Blake Jacoby. Sam Dooms up top. Swings it to Cy Becker. Becker back up top for Matt Konechny. Now Emmett with it left wing. Max sets the screen for him. Emmett, the splitting, splits the double team. No good on the shot, though. And the Greyhounds with a rebound. Nice move there by Konechny, but no good on the finish. Here's Reed Stiglitz. He takes the ball screen, drives left. Thought about pulling up on that mid-range jump shot. Both Stiglitz and Deegan can hit those. Right wing here, it's Treffinger. Treffinger back up top. Stiglitz, little jab step into the corner here for Johnston. Johnston defended by Moore. Back up top here for Treffinger. Treffinger attacks. Back out 
for Rhett Lamovec into the game. And the left wing three, that one's going to be short. Battle for the board here, and oh, that's a big collision. Who do they got the foul on? I think they're going to get Cy Becker. I think Cy Becker is going to get called for the foul here, going into Stiglitz, and that will be the call. And that was a, and that was a close call. I mean, there was definitely a collision. I think Coach Konechny is upset. He thinks it's, it, it was tough to tell who initiated it. But, again, I, Cy Becker definitely made contact. There's no doubt about that. Swing over here to Stiglitz. I think Konechny maybe, Coach Konechny maybe was thinking both of them ran into each other. And it counted and won for Hunter Walter. He has started to dominate in the paint here for the Greyhounds. Or, no, they're going to. They're going to say a foul before the shot. So no shot. Wow. No shot. So no points for Hunter Walter there. Wow, that looked pretty bang bang. But the foul called before the shot. I didn't hear, I didn't see who we got it on. I'm going to guess it was... It might have been Charlie Moore, but I don't, I don't want to guess wrong here. Corner three, Treffinger in and out. Sam Dooms the rebound. And these loyal fans were going to go crazy if that one went in. Kreklau in the corner. Swings it up to Blake Jacoby back into the game now. Emmett Konechny is out. Charlie Moore attacks. Back outside for Jacoby. Can he get his first three? Yes, he can. Blake Jacoby nails it. From downtown, he has got nine points, his first three of the game. He missed his first four from out there, knocks that one down. And he had been doing his damage exclusively from the paint. And now he comes up with a steal. That's going to be a loyal foul. I think this time they're going to get Reed Stiglitz. And they do. Stiglitz with the reach in, and that's a big one because that's number two on Reed Stiglitz. Now they're going to keep him in. Now Coach DeSmet's going to keep him in there. A lot of times in these playoff games, you'll see coaches take them out with two fouls, but I think down by eight, you don't want to get down by any more than that. I think Coach Smith saying, no, we're going to keep our best guys in there. Reed Stiglitz going to stick out there. Blake Jacoby attacks. That's a tough shot. It's blocked off Jacoby out of bounds. Big time block there from Bryce Deegan. As Blake Jacoby just continues to be ultra aggressive here tonight. He's taken nine first half shots. Bryce Deegan gets it across half court. Deegan to the basket, the steps removed. That is a tough finish. I think it was blocked by Kreklau. Offensive rebound, put back good for Kane Tofar. Tofar the big put back. Emmett Konechny quickly back into this game. Takes the ball screen from Kreklau. Kreklau tried to draw a foul, referee says no. Konechny, Emmett with it, defended by Tofar, Charlie Moore on the curl cut, tough shot, he's fouled, Charlie Moore is going to head to your surf pro, Jamie Wenzel free throw line, Isaac, what kind of replay we got there, let's, let's cue one up, oh, we got a foul, a replay of that foul maybe, we'll get, we'll get that to you after this free throw attempt, but right now, surf pro, Jamie Wenzel free throw line, call Jamie Wenzel at surf pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration, surf pro like it never even happened. Charlie Moore good on the free throw. Let's take a look at that replay there, Isaac. And here it is, the foul. And yeah, that one, that one wasn't so close. Seen a couple of close calls tonight. That one, that one looked like a foul. As Charlie Moore goes two for two from your surf pro, Jamie Wenzel, free throw line. Back to an eight-point Don's advantage. Here's Reed Stiglitz. Deflected out of bounds by Matt Konechny. Loyal trying to get the ball across here. 5.45 remaining in the first half. They get it across. Here's Deegan. Defended by Jacoby up top. The Dons in a man-to-man -man defense now. They've switched between that 2-3 and man-to-man. -man. That's what they've been doing all year is kind of switching between a 2-3 and a man-to-man. -man. Matt Konechny will be called for the foul here. And we'll see if they call that on the shot. They did not. It'll go on Matt Konechny, his second personal. Team sixth, and that's a big one because the Loyal Greyhounds will be in the bonus the rest of the way here in this first half. 
Sam Dooms checks in for Matt Konechny. Pass inside here. Kane Tofar swings it out for Stiglitz. Stiglitz, that's a dangerous pass, but he finds Tofar. Back to Deegan. Loyal swinging the ball around here. Now into the corner. Looks like for Isaac Jacoby. A left wing at Schill inside for Tofar. Tofar backing in, backing in. Skips it into the corner. The three from Deegan is good. Bryce Deegan from downtown, and it's a five-point game. Konechny, a whistle and an offensive foul. I think an illegal screen called on Lucas Kreklo. That's Kreklo's first personal team seventh. Now, with that being an offensive foul, there are no free throws. No bonus free throws on an offensive foul. Loyal basketball, and they've got a chance to make this a one-score game again. Here's Bryce Deegan. Now the handoff for Reed Stiglitz. Into the corner here, it's Tofar. Tofar up top for Stiglitz. Back into the corner now for Deegan. Deegan takes the ball screen, finds Tofar. Loyal taking their time here, swings it out to Schill now. And this is shaping up to be that kind of low scoring, grinded out game that I think benefits the Greyhounds. Deegan in the corner, takes the screen from Stiglitz. Back short corner, stolen away by Blake Jacoby. Sixth turnover for Loyal tonight. Jacoby brings it up the other way, defended by Stiglitz. Takes the ball screen from Kreklow. Jacoby to the basket, left hand finish, no good. That's one Jacoby's going to want back. Here's Deegan. Deegan to the rim, into the corner now, Tofar. Back up top for Stiglitz. Deegan defended by Moore. And that goes out of bounds off of Deegan. Be turnover number seven here for the Greyhounds again. The Dons lead this game because of their defense down on this right end of the floor. That is why they are up here tonight. It has not been loyal. Well, just like they did the last time these two teams matched up, have done, they've done an excellent job against the Dons here on this side of the floor. No doubt about that. It's been a defensive battle. A lot of times that's what, this, that's what postseasons come down to. Our defensive battles like this. Here's Kreklau inside. Tough finish for Lucas Kreklau. His first shot, first make. He's got two points. Back to a seven-point Don's advantage. Jacob Schill up top. Swings it over to Stiglitz. Back into the post. Walter outside for Stiglitz. Back into Walter. They've liked this matchup. Now he takes a fadeaway, and he nails it. Hunter Walter with the fadeaway. You'd think with his size he'd be backing in inside, but no, he... A little finesse there with a nice shot there from Hunter Walter. Kreklow in the corner to Moore. Moore attacks. Has a lane. Left hand finish is short. Moore the rebound into Kreklow. Jacoby, a good look from three. It bottoms it. Blake Jacoby on the extra shot. He leads all scores. And again, that was such a good defensive possession by Loyal. Well, Charlie Moore had a decent look at the rim, but not the easiest finish. But Loyal just couldn't steal with the board. Charlie Moore comes up with that offensive rebound. I think it was off a Kreklow tip. 28-20 Columbus. Here's Deegan outside. Takes the ball screen. Step back, jump shot. No good. Walter battling for the board. Emmett Konechny has it. Quickly ahead to Kreklow. Kreklow one on two. Out to Jacoby for another one. No good. Off back rim. Kreklow the offensive board. Charlie Moore the three. That's good. Charlie Moore from downtown. Lucas Kreklau keeps the possession alive. And the Dons back up by double figures. That was all Lucas Kreklau getting that ball back out to Charlie Moore on the offensive rebound. Here's a corner three from Schill. No good. And again, this is where you can be in trouble if you're an opposing team against the Dons. If the Dons start hitting those three balls, it is, it's tough to keep up with them. As Konechny takes the ball screen here, Charlie Moore left wing. Back up top to Emmett. He tries a tough, deep three. Oh, my Lord. Emmett Konechny with the toughest shot of the game. Let's get a replay of that for Emmett Konechny. Timeout, Loyal. We'll take a break. Be back with the final minute 30 of this first half. The Don's on a roll. Back after this on Zaleski Sports. 
I'm Shad from Next Step Prosthetics. Five years ago, we opened our practice to provide life-changing prosthetics that are both comfortable and functional. I would definitely recommend Shy. Shy is very compassionate, caring. We've grown to serve patients throughout Wisconsin. We want to thank them, their families, and providers who have trusted us on the journey. Go to Next Step because it's going to change your life. Why wait another day? Call to set up a free, no obligation evaluation. Let us take the next step together towards a better life. Hey everybody, Matt over at Wheeler Chevrolet GMC and going on now through the end of the month, 2.9% for 72 months on all Silverado half ton, both 23 and 24 model. 2.9 for 72 months, you heard it. Stop on in and talk to a sales consultant today. Culligan Water delivers from your first call to your first sip, to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. Shot to just sit, hold, hesitate, and then take a three a few feet behind the arc with a hand in your face. And that put the Dons up 34 to 20 here over the Loyal Greyhounds. Back underway here in this first half. A minute and a half remaining. Feels like Loyal, they need to get some, uh, some points here to just try to go into halftime, feeling like they, they've got a bit of a, of a groove here. The Don's back on a 9-0 run. That three, no good. Rebound for Treffinger. He's fouled by Charlie Moore, and Treffinger will head to the line for two. Treffinger to the line for two. Hiller's True Value, Central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. Get the tools you trust from the people you can depend on. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield. That one no good off back rim for Treffinger. He's got three points tonight. Sports Scene. Sports Scene in Marshfield is your official fanware store for player jerseys, hats, autograph memorabilia, and more. Sports Scene up the stairs from World Buffet in the Marshfield Mall. Treffinger knocks that one down, goes one for two from the line. He's got four points. The Don's quickly ahead the other way. They have gotten it going from beyond the arc their last few possessions. Blake Jacoby, Charlie Moore, and Emmett Kinnishny have all hit one. Charlie Moore thought about that one. It steps in, mid-range jumper, no good. He wanted a foul, doesn't get it. Winds up being a block for Treffinger. And it's the Greyhounds the other way. We'll see if Loyal thinks about holding for a final shot here just to prevent the Dons from getting another one up there to make sure it's either this score or they're in the, they, they got a better advantage, but no, Kreklau rejects Kane Tofar's shot. Here are the Dons the other way, Emmett Konechny pushes, and he'll take it right to the basket, rejected by Tofar. We get a replay of that one. As Tofar with an excellent defensive play that time. We'll show you that one in just a moment. Here's Konechny to inbound. Konechny into Kreklau. Kreklau tries to save it, out of bounds. Let's take a look at that last block shot. And here it is as Konechny drives to the basket. Tofar right behind him. Tough to get those chase downs and a mean block there for Kane Tofar. And it remains Don's basketball with the out of bounds here. It's an end to Kreklau, now up top for Matt Konechny. Blake Jacoby up top, swings it over to Mack. Blake Jacoby, right wing, step back, three, bottoms it. Blake Jacoby leads all scorers tonight, and that was a tough one. We'll get a replay of that three as well. That goes out of bounds off Loyal. Let's take a look at that last Blake Jacoby three here in just a moment. We'll get that for you. 37-21. And oh we, got, oh, we got a foul on the floor here. Free throws coming up for Kane Tofar. Kane Tofar to the free throw line for two. Or excuse me, I believe we got one and one here. One and one. And he misses it. Battle for the board. And we got a foul on Loyal, which stops the clock. Hunter Walter picks up his first personal. And now the Dons with one second. Can Emmett Konechny get it off? Yes. Can he make it? Oh, my goodness. That was close for Emmett Konechny. No good, though. Let's take a look 
had that last Blake Jacoby three here before we send you to the halftime break. And if you take a look at this Jacoby shot, the pump fake, then the step back behind the defender, and Blake Jacoby gets it to go. He leads all scorers here in this first half with 15 points. We're going to take a break. The Dons lead it 37-21 to 21 over the Greyhounds. We'll take a break, be back with more regional semifinal boys basketball after this on Zaleski Sports. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older. I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys. Me! <laughs> hey, Mike, I'm Sheila from Security, and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood, and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? Why work for Stop Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good and they, I believe, truly care about their employees. Stab has a, a great benefits package. Stab is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Stab Construction. Apply now at StabCO.com. Wondering what to feed your team after work, the game, or this weekend? Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids has tasty char-broiled burgers for any hungry appetite. From the classic hamburger to the famous Chips Champ and everything in between, check out our daily specials. Stop inside to enjoy your meal with comfortable seating. See our complete menu of burgers, hot ham and cheese, hot beef, chicken and fish, fries, rings, curds and ice cream served year-round. In a hurry? Same great menu in the drive-thru. Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids. 2023 was a year of change, innovation, building something new, and teamwork. The h &S legacy is evolving, and we're carrying it forward, designing equipment that helps farmers get the job done, looking ahead to the future of farming while staying true to the values that have brought us this far and made us who we are today. h &S, strong heritage, strong people, stronger future. Welcome back, everybody. 37-21 to 21 at Columbus leads Loyal here in the third matchup between these two teams this season here in this regional semifinal matchup. Again, as I mentioned, or maybe I didn't mention earlier in the game, the winner of this game, of course, moves on to a regional final. If Columbus wins, it'll be here. If Loyal wins, it will be either in Port Edwards or at Alma Center, excuse me, or at Alma Center Lincoln. Yes, Alma Center Lincoln, the four seed, taking on the number five seed, Port Edwards, here tonight. So, again, the winner of this game will play Port Edwards or Alma Center Lincoln tomorrow night. That is tomorrow night, regional final. Again, if the Dons can hold this lead, it will be here at Columbus. Well, it comes back and wins. It will be either at Port Edwards or at Alma Center Lincoln. Quick word from one of our great sponsors here at Zaleski Sports, the people that if we did not have, we wouldn't be able to give you any of these games live and free on ZaleskiSports.com without folks we've heard from already tonight. Jamie Wenzel over at Surf Pro, SC Swarovski, Hiller's True Value, Sports Scene, and now we're going to talk a little bit about Stop Construction. They're a premier builder of municipal and industrial water and wastewater treatment systems in the Midwest. Stop Construction, a 100% employee-owned company. Some other folks we're going to hear from tonight. Uh, the Maple Dude Maple Syrup, Arts Body Shop, Ag Country, Fleet Farm, Blues Hair Studio, Hawkins Ash, Draxler Transport, Woodfield Inn & Suites, Rems Funeral Home, Mutual of Wausau, Viduck Bar & Grill, Sternweiss & Sons, The Great Dog Axe Throwing, Culligan Water, Express Employment, and Nasonville Dairy. Oh, we're going to hear from still here tonight. But in this one, the Dons lead at 37-21 here at halftime. We're going to take another quick break. We'll be back to break down the scoring numbers for you here in this first half right after this on Zaleski Sports. Our find has been based in Marshfield since 1955. And if you're in business that long, you're obviously doing many things right. We always focus on selling world-class products, backing it up with world-class customer support. Working with Brown Fine Business Technologies has been a pleasure. We have staff on call that we can call if we ever have issues, and the printer usability has been really easy, user-friendly. Give us a call, visit our website. We'd be happy to come in, talk to you. Maybe there's a way we can help you save some money and work more efficiently. 
Central Wisconsin Glass is Central Wisconsin's choice for your next new or remodeled shower and bathroom. The experts at Central Wisconsin Glass will effortlessly guide you oh, through oh, the design and installation oh, process. Have the elegant and modern shower and bathroom you've been looking for. Call Central Wisconsin Glass at 715-387-8010. That's 715-387-8010. And Central Wisconsin Glass on Facebook for your residential, commercial, right. and Play vehicle commercial glass first, needs. And let your job journey begin at Express Employment Professionals. Find hundreds of employers looking for a candidate oh, like you. Dude, all did in you one play for? At one time. And let I just Express asked you. No, no, no. Help connect I'm, I'm just asked how many people are watching. Locations in Stevens yeah, Point, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Warsaw, keep playing Marshfield, your commercials. Medford, you'll find uh, local jobs okay. right in your community, including direct hire and evaluation yeah, play the hire normal opportunities. Amount of commercials. Express Employment specializes in light industrial, huh? skilled trades, professional, okay. and office <laughs> careers. Begin your job journey today with Express Employment Professionals at Express Pros.com. Witness the difference of a Catholic education at Columbus Catholic Schools. I think everyone should just know um, what makes this place special. Come and see. That's just what the Lord always said. And put your toe in the water. There are great schools and it's a good fit. I'd always want them to come and to just feel the goodness and the family atmosphere. I invite everyone just to come in and see what it's about and to see if it might be right for them and their family. We invite you to schedule a tour today. Welcome back, everybody. It's 37 to 21. Columbus leads Loyal here at halftime. Winner moves on to the regional final that will be played tomorrow night against Port Edwards or Alma Center Lincoln. Take a look at that first half. Let's start with the Loyal Greyhounds. Their scoring output again. It was first half. The Don started off of 15 to 2. And then the Greyhounds stormed back with a 9-0 run, made it, cut it to a two-point game at one point. And the Dons back on a big run of their own. They started to get it going from the three-point line. It was Charlie Moore, it was Blake Jacoby, and it was Emma Kanishny starting to hit a few threes in that first half. And starting with the Loyal Greyhounds leading the way scoring-wise, it was Hunter Walter using his size on the inside. He's got six first-half points, has not missed a shot yet. Kane Tofar's got four points. Reed Stiglitz has got four. Joseph Treffinger, Treffinger with three, and Bryce Deegan with three points as well for the Loyal Greyhounds. For the Columbus Dons, leading the way in that first half and the leading score for the game, Blake Jacoby. He's got 15 first half points again, and he came out so aggressive to start that game on the offensive side, and I think he felt like he had it going. I, I, maybe it was one of those games. I mean, Blake Jacoby's always a great scorer, second on the team in scoring this season for the Dons, but tonight especially aggressive. I think one of those games where you just feel like you've got it you, you've got the touch. And uh, from the three-point line early on, he missed his first four. Then he's made three of his last four threes. But around the rim, he's been pretty fantastic, especially to start that game. Then it's Charlie Moore. He's got 11, or excuse me, 12 points in that first half for Charlie Moore. Emmett Konechny has got seven. And Lucas Kreklau has got two. So four players doing the scoring in that first half for the Dons. And Blake Jacoby leading the way among them. We're going to take another break, step aside, and we will be back to start the second half of action from Columbus Catholic High School right after this on Zaleski Sports. Over 50 years, the Dental Clinic of Marshfield has served the area with the talent and expertise of big city dentistry with a hometown feel. With our multi-specialty staff and board-certified periodontists, orthodontists, and pediatric dentists, Dental Clinic of Marshfield has solutions for our patients of all ages from 1 to 100. We take pride in being in network with an array of insurance companies to meet the needs of our community and our patients. No matter what your dental need, the Dental Clinic of Marshfield will be there for you. The Sports Den, located on Marshfield's sunny south side since 1975. The Sports Den has the area's best selection of outdoor equipment, fine top brands of snowshoes, cross country and downhill skis, snowboards, swimming equipment, skateboards, and more. The Sports Den has a full-service bike repair center along with top bike brands, Specialized, Trek, and others. The Sports Den is Central Wisconsin's Fat Bike Headquarters. Visit the Sports Den in Marshfield Monday through Saturday and thesportsden.net. Hello, I'm Jenny Shaner, Realtor, Next Home Hub City. If you're a first-time home buyer or seller, or you've been around the block, because of my experience, I'm able to help you in the most efficient way. I'm a full-time, full-service realtor. I focus on my clients 
Let's work together as a team for a win in your next real estate transaction. Winner go home here from Columbus High School. It's 37-21 at Columbus Catholic leads. Loyal here in this regional semifinal matchup. The Maple Dude Pure Maple Syrup since 1858. Look for the Maple Dude brand where you shop for groceries. Find them at themapledude.com or visit the Maple Dude World Headquarters on Highway 10, Granton. As the Maple Dude says, keep it real. And Arts Body Shop, quality auto body and framework since 1952. If you have an accident, let Mackey's 2024 Small Business of the Year give you a free estimate. Call Arts Body Shop on South Central Avenue in Marshfield. Greyhound ball to start this second half, and I think for the Greyhounds, the key is likely, as the Dons have gotten it going offensively, Greyhounds got to find a, a better groove offensively here. The Dons have done a great job defending them here, and that's going to be a backcourt violation, not the way the Greyhounds wanted to start. It'll be their eighth turnover, and that's been one of the biggest stories that first half as well. Seven turnovers for Loyal in the first half, one for Columbus. And again, Columbus is a team that rarely turns it over in most games. So if you're the opposing team, you really can't afford to have much of any because Columbus, they've got one all game. Or excuse me, make that two. I did not count the, Blake, the offensive foul earlier in the game, which is a turnover, but here is Charlie Moore fouled as he goes up for the shot. He's going to go to your serve pro Jamie Wenzel free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel at serve pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration serve pro like it never even happened. Charlie Moore knocks down the first. He's now got 13 points here tonight. Thanks to our game day sponsors, Hawkins Ash, Draxler Transport, Woodfield Inn and & Suites, and Rems Funeral Home. Moore goes two for two from the line. He's got 14 points here in this one. An 18-point lead for the Dons. Deegan brings it up, swings it over to Stiglitz. Again, these Greyhounds looking to find a groove offensively. Just those 20, 21 first-half points. Right wing here, it's Tofar. Takes the ball screen. Into the corner, that one deflected out of bounds off Columbus. Possession stays with the Greyhounds here. Ag Country Farm Credit Services is a farmer-owned co-op offering a wide array of custom financing and financial services from loans and leases to crop insurance and tax and records. They have you covered. Contact Ag Country in Stevens Point, Wausau, Marshfield, and Medford. Again, as you can likely see on your camera, you got plenty of fans being forced to stand as Stiglitz attacks. Contact no call and... Now we got a foul. I think that's going to go on Columbus. That'll be on Charlie Moore. Second personal. Team first here in this second half. But again, right now, if you, if you wanted to come take in this game in the second half, it'd be standing room only here in this Columbus gym. Every spot packed, taken in the bleachers here tonight. Here in the corner, it's Reed Stiglitz. Now up top for Bryce Deegan. Deegan inside, Tofar, the tough shot is good. Kane Tofar, he's got six points. Emmett Konechny brings it up the other way. Quick crossover, hands off here for Becker. Becker with a lane into the corner for Kreklow. Kreklow now to Charlie Moore. Emmett Konechny up top, attacks the basket. Pump fakes now outside to Jacoby. Jacoby, he thought he was going to step back for another three. Instead, it's Emmett for three, in and out. Toilet bowl there for Emmett Konechny. Nearly gets one to go. And he had that really ridiculously difficult three in that first half. Tofar hands off here for Deegan. Deegan, short corner for Jacoby. Isaac Jacoby attacks, looking. Deflected away, nearly stolen away by Jacoby, and it will go out of bounds. Emmett Konechny lays out for it. And they're going to say it, it goes to Columbus. Out of bounds off Loyal. Must have been saying it went off Stiglitz's foot. Nonetheless, it's going to be the ninth turnover of the game for Loyal. Cy Becker up top, swings it over to Charlie Moore. Back up top for Becker. 
As this season has gone on, Becker has taken a lot less threes and has been attacking the basket a lot more. Emmett Konechny, the mid-range jumper, no good. Deegan brings it up. Deegan attacks, short corner, now swings it out here for Stiglitz. Stiglitz nearly has it poked away. Floater, no good, but a foul. Reed Stiglitz is going to the line. Foul called on Cy Becker, his second. Team second. Fleet Farm, pick up all your pet's favorites from Fleet Farm. Find everything from food and treats to toys and health products under one roof. From all the brands you trust, dogs or cats, they've got you covered. Shop your pet's everyday essentials at Fleet Farm. In and out there on that free throw from Reed Stiglitz. Blues Hair Studio, spring has sprung at Blues Hair Studio on North Central Avenue in Marshfield. The stylists at Blues Hair Studio are ready to help you get the best look for spring. Book your appointment with Blues Hair Studio in Marshfield. Reed Stiglitz goes one for two from the line there. Makes it a 15 point game. He's five for six from the line tonight. Lucas Kreklau up top. It's it over to Konechny. Emmett attacks into the corner. Blake Jacoby for three off back rim. No good. Jacoby's hit three threes already here tonight. And leads all scores with 15 points. Stiglitz left wing. Up top now for Jacob Schill. Right wing three for Deegan. No good. It's just going to go out of bounds. It'll stay with, or it'll go to the Dons, excuse me. Bryce Deegan, no good. Checking back in for Loyal is Hunter Walter. Emmett Konechny brings it up here for Columbus. And Loyal in their man-to-man -man defense here. Konechny takes the ball screen from Dooms. Konechny into the corner now for Jacoby. Jacoby thought about going up top to Kreklau. Instead he backs in in the post. Tough shot. Up and good from Blake Jacoby. Man, there are not a lot of maybe about Five, seven, maybe five, eight guys out there that can back you down in the post like Blake Jacoby can. He's done that a few times tonight. I mean, he's only, I, I, they don't list heights here at Columbus, but maybe around five, seven for Blake Jacoby. Maybe five, eight. And for a guy that size to be able to have the strength to go inside and finish at the rim, that you don't see that every day as Emmett Konechny picks up his first personal team third. Yeah, we've seen that really. I mean, if you're a Dons fan, you've heard me talk a lot about the Dons have shown they can attack the basket later in this season. And the guy who's done it maybe more than anybody towards the, towards the end of this year now into the postseason has been Blake Jacoby. The shortest guy on the floor has been the guy who's been the grittiest and toughest at scoring around the rim. And that is uh, words that have, have been used by Coach Konechny to describe Blake Jacoby all year. Gritty and tough. Top of the key three. Good from Reed Stiglitz. Stiglitz has got eight points. That's his first field goal make of the night. All of his points before that have, had come from the free throw line. Konechny attacks. Now outside Charlie Moore. That's going to be a foul on Reed Stiglitz. Trying to poke it away from Moore. That'll be Stiglitz's third personal. Team second. Charlie Moore to inbound. Now into the corner for Emmett Konechny. Konechny the jab step, tough three, it's short. Battle for the board, out of bounds, stays with Columbus. And man, Columbus, they sure have gotten maybe three, four, five second chance opportunities here tonight. And that has been a big difference. A couple of those threes, a Charlie Moore three and a Blake Jacoby three in that first half that were a part of that Big Don's run, came off offensive rebounds. Kreklau nails the three. Lucas Kreklau with five points. And if you're loyal, that's the one guy on the floor you're okay with shooting that three. And if he knocks him down, you just gotta, you gotta shake Columbus's hand and say congratulations on the win because if Lucas Kreklau's nailing those, you gotta leave somebody open and if he's knocking him down, not much you can do if you're loyal. Here's Stiglitz, another three, that's short. Emmett Konechny the rebound. Left wing, Charlie Moore in transition, it's short. Battle for the board. Can Sam Doom saves it and save it? No, he's out of bounds. Charlie Moore, no good. Sam Doom, speaking of gritty and tough. Does all the dirty work for these Dons off the bench. Again, it was curious to see what the Dons rotation would be tonight. They've gone seven deep. 
The two guys off the bench that have been out there have been probably the Don's two best defenders off the bench, Matt Konechny and Sam Dooms. Sam Dooms not going to give you a ton offensively, but he's going to give it to you def defensively. And Matt can shoot a little. He can, he can, Matt, Matt can do a little bit of, little bit of everything as a sophomore, but really known for his defense as Kane Tofar scores at the rim. He's got eight. Kreklau to the rim, no good. Skip ahead here to Tofar. Battle for it. Dooms pokes it out of bounds. Whose ball is it? It stays with Loyal. Forty-four twenty-nine Columbus. Treffinger to inbound. He gets it back to Stiglitz. Reed Stiglitz brings it up. Defended by Jacoby. Swings it over now to Deegan. Deegan scores it. Bryce Deegan for two. Emmett Konechny. Swings it over now to Blake Jacoby. Crosses over. Goes back door to Sam Dooms. Out of bounds. And they say it stays with Columbus. And I don't think Loyal's happy about that. That... It looked like to the naked eye it was off Sam Dooms, but. <laughs> and we got a timeout on the floor. Possession's going to stay with Columbus, I'm almost positive. We'll take a break, be back with what I perceive to be a Columbus possession after this on Zaleski Sports. know how a bank should be at Partners Bank. Banking should be easier. Treating our customers is valued and important. Services should be better with online and mobile banking and locations close to where you live and work. Loans should be quicker and we make all decisions locally with years of experience helping people with their financing needs. Partners Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. The Viaduct Bar and Grill of Marshfield serves juicy half-pound burgers daily. The Viaduct Bar and Grill is also home to cold drinks and fish fry Friday. The Viaduct Bar and Grill on Marshfield's fabulous northwest side. It's Columbus Ball on what you might be able to call a controversial call. But the call was what it was, and it's Columbus Basketball here. 44-31, to 31, your score. Into the corner here for Emmett Konechny. Charlie Moore right wing back into the corner for Konechny. Konechny looks, finds Charlie Moore. Back left wing for Konechny. Konechny going to attack the rim here. He's got a lane. Tough finish, no good. Battle for the board. Loyal has it. It was a good take there, though, by Emmett Konechny. No good on the finish. Greyhounds the other way. We'll see if Loyal, and there's going to be a charge call. Loyal fans are furious. A charge called against Hunter Walter. Let's get a replay of that, Isaac. Let's take a look at that, Ray. When we, when we got it ready, we'll, we'll take a look at that. It was called a charge. Now yeah, let's take a look at it. Backing in here was Walter, and tough to tell. But if you're a Dons fan, you, you've seen this all year. These Columbus Dons have perfected the art form of drawing charges. Maybe you call it a flop, maybe you call it good acting. I don't know what you want to call it, but a foul nonetheless. And now that's going to be a turnover for Columbus, their third. As that, that foul was on Hunter Walter with the charge. And again, there is an art to drawing charges. Half the battle is, is making the referee think it was a foul by falling to the floor. The other half of the battle is there being contact. And there was some contact there. That, there's no doubt about that. Nonetheless, goes down in the, in the history books as a charge. Bang, bang, call. Tough one to make. 44-31. Here's Deegan in the corner. Deegan attacks. Back up top here for Landon Johnston. Johnston now into the corner for Hunter Walter. Walter hands off to Deegan. Back up top here for Landon Johnston. Long possession here for Loyal. Into the post, Tofar, tough shot with the left, no good, defended by Cy Becker. And Tofar had eight point, or six points in that first half. Emmett Konechny attacks, skips it outside, Blake Jacoby. Now Cy Becker tries the top of the key, three and it's good. Cy Becker from downtown, his first points of the game. And I just got done saying that 
Cy Becker has taken significantly less threes as this season's gone along. That time he gets an open look and takes it and makes it. Johnston inside. It's a 16-point Columbus lead. Johnston, the up and under, finishes good off the glass for Landon Johnston. Back to a 15-point game. Charlie Moore takes the screen. Skips it out. Matt Konechny. Konechny. Cy Becker wants another one, and he's got it. Cy Becker heating up from three-point range. And just when you think you got guys like Charlie Moore, Blake Jacoby, and McKinnichini taking care of from three, oh, there's Cy Becker getting open from downtown, hitting back-to-back -back threes. Here's a three in the corner for Johnston, no good. A rebound for Walter, the up and under is good. Hunter Walter for two. The Dons have been leaving Landon Johnston open from three. They had to try it, and Walter Knox gets the putback to go. Here's Jacoby, he attacks, another tough finish, count it, and one for Blake Jacoby. And he has had it going all night long. He has been the most aggressive player offensively all night here for the Dons. Jacoby has clearly come out with the intent to make his mark here in this regional semifinal. And he'll go to the line for one more, Blake Jacoby. Fifty two thirty five. Jacoby converts the and one opportunity. He's got twenty points here tonight. It's been fun to watch Blake Jacoby work here tonight. Attacking the basket, Landon Johnston. These Greyhounds not going away. Sixteen point lead for the Don. Cy Becker in the high post. Backs in, backs in. Now into the corner for Matt Konechny. Short corner for Kreklau. Gets it back out to Mack. Now Emmett with it left wing. Right wing for Cy Becker. Becker inside Emmett Konechny. Quickly skips it out to Kreklau. Dons with no pro have no problem taking some time off here. The clock is absolutely their friend as that is probably, as that one goes out of bounds turnover, that's probably the most rare thing you'll see is a, a miscommunication between the Dons, especially from Emmett Konechny, usually the most sure, the, probably the most sure-handed pass around this team out of a lot of them. And that time, just not on the same page with, maybe it was Jacoby on that left wing, goes out of bounds. Fourth turnover for the Dons, still with a five turnover advantage. Left wing here, Treffinger. Up top, Johnston. Swings it over to Stiglitz. Back up top here for Treffinger. Treffinger into the high post. Here's a jump shot. Banks it in. Rhett Lamovec. Did he call bank? I'll say he did. Two points for Rhett Lamovec. Cy Becker attacks. He's fouled by Lamovec. Will be Lamovec's first. Team fourth. A 14-point Columbus lead. Charlie Moore checks in for Matt Konechny. Emmett Konechny to inbound here for the Dons. Emmett looking, got to find somebody. He does find Cy Becker, goes up with a tough shot, blocked by Lamovec, gets it on the floor, swings out, Blake Jacoby nails it. Blake Jacoby is absolutely on fire here tonight. He's got 23. And a fantastic dribble move. Let's get a replay of that Blake Jacoby three. Not, uh, we'll play it in just a moment here. If we've got it. And there's a corner three from Jacoby, no good. Walter backs into Jacoby there. Back door into the corner. Treffinger for three. No good. Side back of the rebound. Quickly ahead for the Dons. Lucas Kreklau for two. And these Dons are feeling good right now. Their largest lead of the game. A 19-point Columbus lead. Here's Stiglitz. Takes the screen. Back up top for Treffinger. Into the high post, it's Lamovec. Lamovec inside, short corner for Walter. Takes the jump shot, in and out. Battle for the board, that's out of bounds. Off Columbus, 
Let's take a look at that last three-point shot from Blake Jacoby. And here was the block. Cybecker got blocked. Gets the ball. Swings it out to Kreklau. Back up top for Blake Jacoby. And then Jacoby absolutely cans the three. You can see a member of the Columbus student section. They knew that was good. Timeout on the floor. We'll take a break. Back after this on Zaleski Sports. After a couple years of a job that doesn't fit, it's time for more money, more opportunity. That is where Mid-State Technical College comes in. Would cooking be a good fit? Try on a career in welding. Perhaps the outdoors suits you better. Or maybe helping people is a better fit. No matter your path, we've got cutting edge classes with field trained professionals and better tuition options, making Mid-State the perfect fit. 58-39 Columbus, Sternweiss and Sons. Sternweiss and Sons, ready mix and block plan of Marshfield, now hiring boom truck and concrete truck drivers. Be home every night and work for the hometown team at Sternweiss and Sons. If it's time for you to make a change, apply today at the Ren Road Ready Mix location. Sternweiss and Sons of Marshfield. Here's Reed Stiglitz, now into the post for Tofar. Tofar up top. For Lamavec, Lamavec back outside. Treffinger thought about the three, but finds Stiglitz instead. Stiglitz, left-hand shot, no good. Offensive rebound for Tofar. Two points for Kane Tofar. 17-point game. Blake Jacoby skips it out to Becker. He attacks the basket. Mid-range jump shot, good. And Cy Becker has really found his groove in this second half. He's got eight points. Has not missed a shot. He hasn't missed a shot all game. He didn't attempt a shot in that first half. Again, that's just the thing with these Dons. As Blake Jacoby comes up with a steal, a guy can go the whole first half. You barely know he's on the court offensively. They've just got so many weapons. In the second half, he can be a key cog in this Dons machine. And that's what's happened with Cy Becker tonight. Didn't have to score in that first half. Then in the second half, he's taken over. Charlie Moore attacks the basket. He's fouled on the floor. That one called on Rhett Lamavec, his second personal. Team sixth. So the Dons will be in the bonus the rest of the way here in this second half. Again, the Dons look to be on their way to a regional final matchup here at home. Emmett Connection need to inbound. Gets it into Lucas Kreklau. The spin move, left hand jump hook off glass and good. Lucas Kreklau. He has got nine points, seven in this second half. These Dons really have felt like they've hit another gear even in this, in this second half. Here's a right wing three for Schill, no good. Again, Columbus, they have made it, made no mistake what their goals are this year. They've been our top ranked team in the state all season for Division Five. Cy Becker's gonna head to your surf pro, Jamie Wenzel free throw line, but these Dons have made no mistake about it. Their goal is the state tournament. And I think to make some noise at that state tournament. Isaac Jacoby picks up his first, and again, there's, you could say that's every team's goal every year, which of course it is, if, if, you, if you can, yes. Your, your goal is to go to the state tournament. Cy Becker nails it, but there's, there's a lot, there, very rare cases, again, there's only a few teams in the state where it really is a realistic goal to say state champions. Now again, that is the toughest thing, in the, the toughest thing to do and even excellent teams as Cy Becker goes two for two from your Surf Pro Jamie Wenzel free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel at Surf Pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration Surf Pro like it never even happened. But again, it is the toughest thing to do. Even if you're a great team like the Dons are, if you get put in a tough section or you're going up against tough teams at State, as Lucas Kreklau, what a block. Let's take a look at that replay. And we will. We're going to take a break first, and then we'll come back and take a look at that replay and finish this last 457 after this on Zaleski Sports. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, how can I help you? Scotty's Pizza and Chicken has been voted best pizza in Marshfield 15 years in a row. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken is ready for your call now at 715-384-8118. Choose Drunken Chicken, BLT, Western, Mac and Cheese, Sweet Chili Chicken, and more. Plus, Scotty's has roasted chicken, fish, sandwiches, salads, and desserts. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, 715-384-8118 and scottyspizza.com. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, how can I help you? At the Granite Shop, we take great pride in what we do. 
We offer high quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man-made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high-end, high-quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin. Action here, 64-43 your score, Blake Jacoby left wing. And as I was saying before the break, not a lot of teams with realistic, actual realistic chances from the outside looking in at going to state and making noise at state. The Dons are one of them. Now they've got a brutal sectional. There's no doubt about it. They've, as Charlie Moore has called for a travel here, Dons have a brutal sectional. They've got a royal team that if they, may, if they continue to advance, they would have to play in a sectional semifinal next week, Thursday, if the Dons can win tomorrow night, of course. And if... They get through Royal, then they've got likely a team like Potosi, who's been right there with Columbus as, as far as the rankings are considered. With And both those teams, Royal and, and Potosi, have a lot of size. Here's a corner three. It's good from Bryce Deegan. Eight points in the game for Bryce Deegan. Makes it an 18-point ball game now. Cy Becker up top here for the Dons. Now into the corner for Charlie Moore. The Don's going to be well okay to just waste some clock here. These Loyal Greyhound fans still making noise here. Their team, they're not giving up on their squad here tonight. Love to see that from the fan section. Lucas Kreklau trying to silence him, though. He's got 11 points, 9 in the second half. The Grey Dog Axe throwing. The Grey Dog Axe throwing is now open in Marshfield. It's fun for all ages, 8 and older, so bring the whole family. Join a league or plan a party. Book your awesome experience today. Visit thegreydogaxe.com or find them on Facebook for more information. Jacob Schill, no good on that three. He hasn't hit a, sh hit a three yet tonight. 0 for 4 from 3. I think the Dons clearly, after how well Schill shot against them their last game, making an effort to not let him get good looks. Blake Jacoby, tough finish, no good. Back here to the Greyhounds. Here's Isaac Jacoby. Top of the key, three for Schill. No good, back of the board. Get Culligan Water for only $9.95 a month for the first three months. Visit Sterling Culligan Water at CulliganH2O.com. Emmett Konechny, mid-range jump shot, no good. Greyhounds the other way, 66-46. Your score here tonight. Kane Tofar, hands off for Stiglitz. And again, the Greyhounds, they're going to have to go ultra quick. They really don't have any time to waste. You're almost in a spot where if you just get a, if you can get a shot off from three, with one of your shooters, better off just taking it here. They're going to attack the rim. Becker falls to the floor. And I, no foul. Isaac Jacoby scores. Timeout loyal. We'll take a break. Back with the final 216 after this on Zaleski Sports. At the Granite Shop, we take great pride in what we do. We offer high quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high end, high quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin. Welcome back, everybody, as about two minutes remaining here in this matchup. It is Columbus Don basketball, and again, I honestly wouldn't be shocked if they just try to hold the ball, pass the ball around until Loyal fouls them. It's usually what you see at this point in the game. Now, 18 points, two minutes. It would take a miracle for any comeback to happen, but a turnover or a miss, miss shots, giving the other team the ball back would be the quickest way to allow it to happen. As the Dons. Going to work the ball around here, Charlie Moore. Greyhound's going to have to really start trying to deflect these passes. They do there, out of bounds. Express Employment, find your next career path with just a phone call to Express Employment Professionals with locations in Wausau, Stevens Point, and Marshfield. No matter where you are in central Wisconsin, Save yourself some time and find your next employer 
at expresspros.com. Also a reminder that coming up at the conclusion of this game, stay tuned because we'll have your Nasonville Dairy post-game show. Nasonville Dairy with fresh cheese curds made daily. Get your cheese curds, Nasonville Dairy and Marshfield Curtis or NasonvilleDairy.com. I'll be down on the floor with, if the Dons are able to close this thing, I'll be down on the floor with Coach Konechny as well as our Highlight House player of the game. Cy Becker has his shot blocked there. But it does look like this is going to bring an end to the Loyal Greyhound season. They would finish, they will finish 12 and 14 overall on the year. Schill misses that three. And eight and six in conference play here this season. Schill tries another one, no good. Loyal continuing to fight here. Again, you like to see that when you know, I mean, you know your season's coming to an end, but again, you like to see just no quit in your team at the end, especially, again, it's a pretty good time to look at this Loyal team looking ahead, or looking ahead to next year for this Loyal team because this is a very young group. A lot of sophomores, Reed Stiglitz, shown a lot of potential. He's done a nice job here this year that he believe he leads the team in scoring here this season. And you look at their scoring this year. Bryce Deegan leads the, leads the team in scoring, also a sophomore. Reed Stiglitz, second on the team. Jacob Schill, he's a, one of the lone seniors on this group. Kane Tofar, a sophomore. Rhett Lamovec as well. So I think a, a bright future to look ahead for if you're loyal. You finished the season winning nine of your last 14 games here this season. Pretty great, pretty good way to end the year and definitely a team that improved. I mean, if you look at the, the way this game went to start the year, it was a 40-point blowout instantly to the way Loyals played the last couple of games against arguably the best team in the state. We'll, we'll get a chance to see if the Dons are here in, the, in this state tournament or in, the, in, this, in, once, in, this, in this playoff tournament. But uh, played them tough a couple of times here. I know 18-point game, say playing them tough, but it, it is. Uh, the way the Dons have toyed with other teams this year as Nemitz nearly goes backcourt, and he does. That will be a backcourt violation, but that'll bring Loyal season to an end. And But I still think a bright future for these Loyal Greyhounds to look forward to next year, the, the year after. I mean, I think a team that could have a chance at conference next season already with the Dons. They're going to lose their entire lineup. You never know. It'll be competitive, that's what I know for sure. Schill misses there. 30 or 20 seconds remaining here in this one. The Dons are going to move on to a regional final. I do not have a score update from Port Edwards, Alma Center, Lincoln. So unsure of who the Dons are going to play. Maybe try to get that for you during the break before the interviews. But 10 seconds remaining here in this one. The Dons going to run the clock out. That is going to do it. The Columbus Catholic Dons take down the Loyal Greyhounds 66 to 48 here tonight. The Dons advance to a regional final tomorrow night here at Columbus. They will host either Port Edwards or Alma Center Lincoln. 66 48, your final. We're going to take a break. Here from our friends over at Nasonville Dairy. Be back with live interviews and your Nasonville Dairy post game show after this on Zaleski Sports. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin as a matter of fact. Nasonville Dairy actually goes back to 1885. We are the oldest plant in Wood County. When our father brought us here in the early 1960s, we ran 7,500 pounds of milk a day. We now run 1.8 million pounds of milk a day. We buy dairy milk from 200 dairy farmers here in central Wisconsin, produce it and ship it all over the world. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteria, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edam, Gouda, and Munster. This has allowed us to go to a lot of different countries. Our furthest accounts are now in China, Japan, Canada, Saudi Arabia. We do ship to Mexico, as well as a number of other places throughout the world. This is what we call Cheese Making 101. We tried to walk you through the cheese plant today and we're in hopes that you see our people, what they're doing, and the amount of work that goes into producing the products that we hope you enjoy.
We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteri, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edom, Gouda, and Munster. And the cheese be with you. I had an employee at once ask me to prioritize family, faith, and business. And I put them in that order in particular. For each one of our employees, it's family first. You do what is best for you and your family. Then the rest of it will take care of itself. It's about making sure you make the best decisions for you and your family. Hi, I'm Big Clarence, and I'm so terrific that Mall Furniture decided to name their latest and greatest sale after me, Big Clarence. Sorry, Clarence, apparently you misunderstood. It's Mall Furniture's clearance sale. And right now, the savings are phenomenal on all the top quality furniture at Mall, Mall Furniture's clearance sale. sale. That's Mall Furniture's clearance sale. Clarence! That's clearance, Clarence. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin as a matter of fact. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteri, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey as well as making Edom, Gouda and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield, Central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. The tools you trust from the people you can depend on. Shop the store within a store and find what you're looking for. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Now that's what I was looking for. Looks like you found what you're looking for. We redesigned our store to offer the biggest selection of Milwaukee tools. A selection so big you'll need a map to find your way out. Hiller's True Value in Marshfield, Central Wisconsin's Milwaukee Tool Destination Center. Hi, I'm Shad from Next Step Prosthetics. Five years ago, we opened our practice to provide life-changing prosthetics that are both comfortable and functional. I would definitely recommend Shy. Shy is very compassionate, caring. We've grown to serve patients throughout Wisconsin. We want to thank them, their families, and providers who have trusted us on the journey. Go to Next Step, because it's gonna change your life. Why wait another day? Call to set up a free, no obligation evaluation. Let us take the next step together towards a better life. Hey everybody, Nat over at Wheeler Chevrolet GMC and going on now through the end of the month, 2.9% for 72 months on all Silverado half ton, both 23 and 24 models. 2.9 for 72 months, you heard it. Stop on in and talk to a sales consultant today. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys, me. Hey Mike, I'm Sheila from Security and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? Culligan Water delivers from your first call to your first sip, to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. Welcome back everybody to your Nasonville Dairy post game show. Nasonville Dairy with fresh cheese curds made daily. Go to nasonvilledairy.com. Join up my coach, Kineshi and coach. You guys are moving on to regional finals here. You'll be playing, uh, sounds like Alma Center Lincoln here tomorrow night, but here tonight, you guys got up to that 15 to two lead, then Loyal stormed back, made it close. How did you guys, what did you guys do to, to kind of get that lead back again after Loyal kind of stormed back, stuck with you guys? And then it, there were a lot of offensive rebounds in there, but what did you guys do well to, to extend that lead again? Yeah, I thought we did a, a pretty good job of just moving the ball side to side and, and being selective in how we took outside shots. You know, we, we tried to push the ball up the floor, um, but then we were, we were really disciplined once, once the Loyal got back. 
Um, you know, I, obviously we're really nervous about this game. Uh, Brandon DeSmet is an unbelievable basketball coach, um, and you knew that it wasn't going to be easy. And I wasn't surprised at all when they when they made it a battle. Uh, he's just a great, great coach. Yeah, and then it, to, to me it seemed like the story tonight was a couple of things, defense and, and some of your offensive rebounding. It seemed like you guys got a lot of, a couple of those extra shots where it was a part of that run that I think Charlie hit a three on one of them, Blake hit a three on one of them. Um, I guess talk a little bit about your guys' performance defensively tonight and because Loyal, like they kind of did that last time, played pretty tough man-to-man -to -man defense, especially early in that first half. But uh, defensively, you guys were able to keep their score low, so you still kind of kept that lead there. Yeah, well, they, they have a number of, of young men that are they're very talented. You know, that Shill kid's a really good shooter. I thought we did a good job of running him off the three-point line. And then Stiglitz and Deegan are just really nice basketball players and athletes. Um, and then along with those two, you got Tofar in the middle with two or three other guys that are big. So, um, you know, it's bittersweet because we, we beat a really good team and we get to play another day. Um, you know, obviously, Coach DeSmet was one of us a long time ago. Um, and we love him. And I know he's he's you know, his season ended tonight. So... While I'm happy, I, I definitely uh, never, ever want to play against that guy or see him get beat. Yeah, and then you don't have a lot of time to enjoy this one right away tomorrow night. It's going to be Alma Center Lincoln, sounds like here. How much do you know about them, and, and I guess uh, what, what's the, what, what were your thoughts on, on that matchup tomorrow night here? You'll get to host. Well, they're very talented. You know, they got some really good athletes, a couple in particular that can score outside, inside, and really attack the rim. Um, we're going to have to rebound well. You know, they're athletic enough to press full court and to play a number of defenses, so... Uh, we have our work cut out for us. You know, we've watched them a few times on film, and uh, it'll be another another tough game tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you. Yep. All right, Blake Jacoby, our hot house player of the game. Blake, eh, not not an easy one tonight. It's postseason basketball, and it felt like it here tonight. Um, what what what's kind of struck me? We'll talk about your game individually first of all. I think you at 25 points. From the start of this game, it looked like you were maybe as aggressive as I've seen you right from the beginning of this game. Was that something that you came in tonight you felt like you had to or you should be that kind of aggressive, especially attacking the basket? It seemed like you were you were attacking the basket relentlessly to start this game. Yeah, I knew that. I saw Emma and Charlie and Warren. I saw them start making shots, and I knew that if I drove, I could possibly kick it out to them or finish at the rim. So that was kind of my game plan going into it. Yeah, and then for a while there, that was kind of your guys' offense to start that first half. You were scoring in the paint, getting some of those tough shots. And then it looked like Lucas was getting you guys some offensive rebounds, got you a three, got Charlie a three. How did you guys kind of get that, that three-point game going, or, or how did you kind of stick with it there as, you know, to start that game, Loyal kind of held you from three, but then you finally you did get that going and it kind of broke this game open. Yeah, we know that we, we have to start shooting threes eventually because most of our game plan is to shoot threes or... And Lucas getting the big offensive rebound, kicking it out, that's just big for us. It gets the energy going, and then we have more confidence going into our three-point shooting. And then talk about what you guys did defensively tonight, because for a while to start this game, it really was a defensive battle. Both of you, I think it was like 23 to 18 with a couple of minutes left there in that first half. You know, what did you think you guys did, def did well defensively tonight? Because even some of the players that got going the last time you guys played them didn't really get it going much here tonight. Yeah, we knew we had to step up, step up on defense and start denying more people try to get in their grill more and start trying to get deflections, try to get out and transition more, and then lean after that, get layups, get threes after that, and then get back on defense again. And then a quick turnaround tomorrow night, regional final. It sounds like it will be Alma Center Lincoln for you guys um, tomorrow night. Obviously, tonight you played a team that you've seen a lot. Tomorrow night, a team you haven't played yet this year. What are your thoughts heading into that matchup tomorrow night? I know you guys maybe have a probably quick walk around or something or shoot around tomorrow and, and right into it. What are your thoughts heading into that matchup? You guys are hosting a regional final tomorrow. Yeah, it's super exciting, but we got to come with the same effort we did today. And coming with the same effort today, we got to keep shooting the ball well and keep driving in the lane, kicking out, and then D up on defense like we did today. All right, we'll get you in the house. That'll be the last thing. I'll cut you down 3, 2, 1. Okay. Three, two one. I'm Blake Jacoby, and I'm in the house. Right, great job, man. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Yep. All right, that was Blake Jacoby, our Highlight House player of the game here tonight. The Dons come out with a 66 to 48 victory here tonight over the Loyal Greyhounds. And again, it, it was one of those games. It was gritty to start this game. We thought it would be. Again, when it, coming into this game, we said that, you know, if you're coming in from the outside in and you're expecting a blowout from the start, probably not going to get it. Now, it looked like at the start, it was 15 to 2. It was like, oh, we might, we might get that. Um, but then Loyal came back, and it wound up being an 18 point game, but it, it was tough. And this is what you like to see in the postseason. I, I think. You know, we'll talk about Columbus here in a second, but these loyal Greyhounds, as you know, Coach talked about, Coach DeSmet, and I, I probably have to second what he said there because uh, these Greyhounds have very, very much improved throughout this season. They started off three and nine to come back and finish the season the way they, the way they did. I think this loyal Greyhound team with these soft, this sophomore class and some of these guys they got, probably a pretty bright future for these Greyhounds next year and the year after. But 
for now, their season's done here in 2024. The Columbus Dons move on to the regional final. It'll be Alma Center Lincoln tomorrow night. That'll be live on Zaleski Sports. If you can make it down to the gym, come down to here to Columbus High School here in Marshfield, Wisconsin, and take in that Alma Center Columbus game. Should be a great game. Regional final, regional championship on the line tomorrow night. We were at full capacity here in the gym here tonight, and I hope to see that again tomorrow night. But if you can't make it, can't make it, we got it here on Zaleski Sports for you. We'll be here. We'll be broadcasting it. Happy to do so here on Zaleski Sports. But Columbus comes out with a 66-48 to win here tonight. They move on to the regional final tomorrow night against Alma Center Lincoln. That brings us to the end of our Nasonville Dairy postgame show. Nasonville Dairy with fresh cheese curds made daily. Go to nasonvilledairy.com. And that's going to bring us to the end of our broadcast here tonight. I want to thank everybody excuse me, for joining us here tonight. It was a great game here tonight from Columbus High School. From myself, Kale Jacoby, alongside Isaac Eagle and Elena Eagle doing the production here tonight. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Zaleski Sports.